Good afternoon, an incredible grand final. Robbie Williams, one of the best pre-game entertainments we've ever seen. Unfortunately, the game itself didn't live up to the hype and expectations, but it was interesting for its own reasons. Geelong, by 81 points, their 10th flag, after what you'd have to say was a fairly dominant home and away season. They were clear on top. Isaac Smith won the Norm Smith medal. Three goals, 32 disposals. Joel Selwood, his first flag as captain, his fourth flag. Incredible as itself. I'll get to Joel shortly. Patrick Dangerfield had nine clearances, was stiff not to win the Norm Smith, but his first flag, he's avoided that, uh, I guess, patch of history where he can go down as one of the champions and not win a flag, a bit like Nick Rewalt and Nathan Buckley, and he's etched himself into footy folklore, Patrick Dangerfield. He was crucial around the stoppages and crunched in. You could tell he was intent on not going down that path in terms of his career. Jeremy Cameron, two goals, also winning his first flag. A lot of the young guys, De Conning, just incredible day. Um, Stengel, his own story, was due to go to Collingwood at one point. Obviously, had the indiscretion at Adelaide. Collingwood uh, weren't in a position to take him. Geelong put their hand up, and hasn't that paid incredible dividends and absolute credit to Stengel. An interesting adjunct to the story this morning. This is how well the Cats are going. They've rolled up to Mad Monday dressed as pensioners, which I'm sure will cause some discussion. Joel Selwood was on the walking frame there. They've come in the retirement home bus. You'll see those pictures on all the news services today. How well are they going? They've just won the grand final by 81 points, and they're equally as adept at uh, dressing up. They've always been good at it, the Cats, and they've got into the spirit of things today. In terms of, uh, I guess, the big stories from Geelong's perspective to come out of it, clearly they've uh, broken or shattered this title that uh, they were too old and too slow to win another flag. Chris Scott has specifically timed them to the absolute minute. An incredible performance by Scott, whose career obviously continues as coach, but it's now bookended so far with flags at the start and most recently, so a second flag for Chris Scott. Incredibly well-deserved. In terms of Joel Selwood, I was absolutely moved over the weekend. He took out Levi Ablett through the banner, which was so special for the Ablets. At the end of the game, he presented his boots to uh, the Oz kicker. He absolutely starred Joel Selwood. And I think you could see in his emotion, and I've spoken to some sources about this who won't confirm as much, but I think you will see Joel Selwood retire in the next couple of weeks. But in his own time and to his own drum, and he can announce that. And, uh, you know, I think you'll just do that quietly because he won't want to take anything away from the Cats situation at the moment from a team perspective. But I do think you'll find that Joel Selwood will quietly retire in coming weeks. And boy, will there be a lot of interest in Selwood. He's an absolute jet. I think his finals record in terms of appearances now rivals St Kilda's single-handedly. So that tells you a bit about his appetite for success in September. And uh, he was an absolute beauty over the weekend, as were the entire Cats team. The Swans had an incredible season, whichever way you look at it, but it sort of amounts to nothing in some respects now. It was embarrassing, according to Isaac Hooney, who I spoke to, spoke to one-on-one in the rooms post-game. Also spoke to Luke Parker. They didn't see that start coming. They couldn't explain. They were baffled, they told me, as to how it sort of translated that way. They fumbled. They didn't use their usual running patterns in terms of moving the ball, you know, using handball against Geelong. And uh, they just didn't crack in. And it was a very, very surprising and uncharacteristic performance by the Swans. You know, if you look at Adelaide and the Giants, of course, it could have long-term scars. Maybe Sydney are different because of their unique club culture, but we'll find out next year. You know, guys like Hickey were ineffective. Having said that, he was good, the Ruckman, the week before against the Pies. So you've got to take the good with the bad. A bit like Buddy. He towed up the Pies, took crucial marks, couldn't clunk one. Admittedly, with limited delivery on Saturday, only had five possessions, two in one play, admittedly. So it was almost like four touches coming out of the week where he signed his contract extension. I know there's obviously discussion about whether that would have occurred after the grand final. I think it was all on track. It would have, but uh, it was an interesting performance. Sydney, they'll be absolutely devastated, but uh, it was an uncharacter- uh, uncharacteristic performance, and I'm not sure that uh, many teams would have beaten Geelong on Saturday. Now, there's a big story brewing at St Kilda. This started last week. It was flagged, but I think got a bit lost in the wash of grand final week which is completely understandable. What's been happening is that Andrew Bassett's the president. He's very successful in business. He was the co-founder of Seek. He's worth, I think, up to a billion dollars. Like, he's phenomenally successful. He, um, it was described last week as sick of mediocrity. So he's conducted a bit of a football review with Simon Lethlin, who's the incoming CEO, was the football boss. And there's been some changes already. And I think these will be announced formally over the next week or so. But what they announced about three or four weeks ago, St Kilda, was that David Rath would be the boss of football or the head of football and that James Gallagher would be the head of list management. There's been a change and a significant one. In the coming weeks, they'll announce Jeff Walsh as the football boss. Now, obviously, you know Jeff Walsh, but most recently, the Carlton and North Review. This is a big move by Simon Lethleen 
And uh, Jeff Walsh will run that football department for the best part of a couple of years. I think the, the idea at the moment is that Rath will stay. I'm not sure what his role will be. Um, I imagine some type of uh, reduced football role. But Jeff Walsh is going to be the new honcho in town at St Kilda from a football perspective. This was flagged last week. I think Footy Classified mentioned it. But I think this will be formalised now in the, in the next couple of weeks. I think it's a bit of an open secret at St Kilda. And there's a big, big move after their disappointing season. The Hawthorne, Alastair Clarkson, Chris Fagan situation now is likely to become the biggest story this off-season. It could absolutely drag on. It's one of the most serious matters raised in AFL in recent times, certainly in modern times. It rivals, from a news perspective, the Essendon situation. The latest over the weekend is that Leon Zwyer has, I think, been locked in now to assist the families. He's a top litigator with Arnold Block and Liebler, so he's involved. And the AFL today is still working on the four-person panel. Once that panel is set up, and I think it'll um, include a couple of King's councils, or at least one, they used to be called Queen's councils, and a couple of prominent Indigenous female lawyers. They're working on a good um, cross-section, the AFL, in terms of that. So it's amenable to the alleged victims. Um, and uh, diversity, obviously, the name of the game there, in terms of the composition of that panel. And that's being worked on by the AFL. Other sources suggest that there are other football people mentioned in this report. I'm not attributing any guilt whatsoever. But the point there is that it's got potentially far-reaching implications across the game still. And uh, this is not attributing that to Gill, but Gill did flag Gil McLaughlin on Fox last week that this story could, in fact, grow. I think he alluded to that, that, you know, it's got, uh, you know, the potential, I guess, to become bigger. Uh, In terms of North Melbourne's position, crucially, on Alastair Clarkson over the weekend, Sonia Hood, the president, who appointed Alastair Clarkson, remember she said Plan A, we're not going down Plan B, Alastair Clarkson's our plan Plan A, and she delivered Alastair Clarkson. She said, told Seven News, I'm really confident in his side of the story, that's Clarkson's, and I'm sure we'll all get the chance to hear that through the AFL's process. Brisbane have done a similar thing and backed uh, Chris Fagan, or certainly giving him a, given him a strong, strong, strong endorsement in terms of his character over the weekend. So that's sort of the latest in terms of where the Hawthorne situation fits. I don't want to take it too much further than that, because at this stage we just need further facts, obviously. But the point is the AFL is trying to get that panel in place as soon as today, which will allow the investigation to start. It's got massive implications for Brisbane. They're without a coach in the preseason. That's okay for them. They've got good structures in place. Norse, the big one. They've brought in Todd Viney as the boss of football, relatively inexperienced as the boss of football, would have worked closely with Clarkson. They've obviously already made changes in terms of their list management. They've brought in, they've re-signed players like Zuha. They're looking to bring players in, and uh, it's got the potential to leave them without a coach now until you know, January, February or beyond, unless this can be worked out to the victim's satisfaction or alleged victim's satisfaction sooner. Trade news. Everyone loves it. Where should I start? Brody Grundy will announce his intention to go to Melbourne as soon as today, most likely, well, certainly be this week. Collingwood now looking at Mitchell, who I think had some contact with Collingwood late last week. That's Tom Mitchell from the Hawks. Um, or possibly Fiorini from the Gold Coast, but more likely Mitchell Collingwood certainly interested in an inside mid mid to help with their clearance situation. Jordan Degoe still hasn't announced his decision between Collingwood and St Kilda. Collingwood last week offering up to five years. St Kilda offering something similar. The money's analogous. You'd expect that he'd say at Collingwood, but his manager, Ryan Vague, who's his brother-in-law and a firefighter, has done a good job in this uh, deal and uh, certainly driven up interest from both parties. That's still a live issue. Geordie officially, at least, undecided at the moment. Collingwood, I spoke to Colin Young, a manager, one-on-one on Friday in an interview. Will land Bobby Hill, Frampton, and Akers, who's another Colin Young client, will obviously get to Carlton. That's the latest in terms of those guys there. So just repeating that, I think Brody Grundy will announce his intention to go to Melbourne today or tomorrow, and Collingwood will turn their attention to an inside mid. Obviously, separately, McStay nominated Collingwood on Monday. Um, sorry, Friday, I should say. So that's basically official in that regard. Moving on to Hawthorne, a lot of focus on Jack Gunston, a triple premiership player. He's been offered two years by the Hawks, I understand. Brisbane offering, obviously, the attractiveness of success. Gunston's certainly interested in that. They'll have Ashcroft next year. Uh, Brisbane, who's ra- rated perhaps better than Nick Dacos, who are running to over the weekend. He's a beauty, Nick. Um, it's hard to believe that Ashcroft could be better than Nick, but uh, we'll see next year. It's an exciting proposition. Obviously, Brisbane will have Dunkley as well. So Gunson's weighing up the success at Brisbane, obviously against the fact that uh, his family's in Melbourne. His dad sadly passed away, Ray, this year. He likes being close to his mum. I know he likes playing golf, of course, uh, in the, on the coast as well. He likes being in Melbourne, but Brisbane has that lure of success for Gunston. So a lot of trade news is going to heat up over the next week or so. I'll just finish off today with the situation at Essendon and what will also become a significant story this week. 
I believe, this is a prediction, that Brad Scott will be announced as the Bombers coach by the end of the week. Now, he has to meet with them in coming days. I think he's got the AFL executive meeting this morning. They've got their wacky Monday or mad Monday to start doing the AFL. I'm not sure if Brad's appearing at that. But as soon as tomorrow, Brad will ramp up talks with the Bombers. Given his 211 games experience as senior coach, he's 106-105 record, better than 50%. I think it's attractive for the Bombers and will be attractive for the Bombers. And there's a strong, strong chance that Brad Scott, it's my view that he will be, announced as the Bombers coach by the end of the week. He might have even been lured by his brother's success, Chris, over the weekend. Um, I know Brad was at a Brisbane function yesterday um, and no doubt would have caught up with Chris over the weekend as well. Essendon also zeroing in on its search for a CEO. I understand they were interested at one point in the uh, in the Pies CEO, Mark Anderson. They might have sounded him out as part of their final four, but uh, Essendon zeroing in on their search for a CEO as well. So a lot going on behind the scenes at the Bombers, and that'll all sort of uh, start to become clear as soon as the end of this week, particularly in regards they will announce a coach, in my view, by the end of this week. That wraps up, that wraps up a pretty big news day. Thanks so much for joining the podcast. I'll be back on Thursday. It's a busy, busy news week. As we we then obviously move into uh, the trade situation during the year, I'll update you as soon as I can on trade stories. They don't hold long, so we'll update our social channels as and when they pop up. But thanks so much for joining us. A massive weekend. Congratulations to the Cats. It was an interesting grand final, but it's going to all ramp up now, Hawthorne and Essendon in particular, this week.